So for the longest time, I've been using the Pycom Tri-1 fork to do my blurred windows, as you can see here, because even though this fork was really, really outdated, and it was missing a lot of Pycom performance improvements and new settings, it still had the dual color say blur method, which was really the only blur method that I could actually get working and is really, really performant. So finally I found out that this feature got merged back into the main branch, but because Pycom is such a mess with all of these various different forks, a lot of the information out there about Pycom is really, really outdated because some of them are about the old forks, some are about even older forks that did similar features. So I felt like actually doing an updated video on window blur. So the first thing we need to do is deal with my Pycom config. So let's go into my .config folder and then go down to Pycom and it's going to be called pycom.conf. Now, if you haven't updated it from when Pycom switched from being Compton, it might still be called compton.conf. Make sure you actually go and update the file name because it has been deprecated and it will be removed at some point. So the first thing we need to do in here is go and set some opacity rules because the only windows that are going to be blurred are the windows that have some level of transparency. So in this case, I'm basically just blurring my terminal windows and that's pretty much it. So I typically like to use class G. This refers to the window class name, but there are other things you can use. So you can use name, client, window type, leader, class I, and role. Now, the way that we go and get this information is we're going to use an application called Xprop. Now, Xprop, I believe, is in a package called xorg-xprop, but just go and check what it's in on the distro you're running. So if we go and run Xprop, basically what it's going to do is give us this little cursor here. So this will actually let us get information about the window that we click on. So in this case, let's click on this window to the left here. And as we can see, we have all of this information in here. Most of it, we don't really care about though. So in this case, what we care about is we care about the name, or in my case, we're going to care about the class. So let's try it out on something like say ST, and we're going to see what sort of different information we get. So try it on this one. And as we can see, in this case, the name is going to be ST, but the class is going to be ST-256 color. Now, not every window is going to have the same information. So in the case of ST, it doesn't actually have a window type listed in here. Well, if we try this again, but on Alacrity, as we can see, the window type is going to be set to normal. So from my testing and messing around with Xprop, the two most consistent things are the name and the class. So I'd recommend just using one of those. So either class G or class I. Class G refers to the value in position zero, and then class I refers to value in position one. So class G might be a bit better just because I know that every single window I've seen has had at least one class name. Once we have this information, we can go and set our opacity rule. So what we do is inside of a block that starts with opacity dash rule equals and then inside of square brackets ending with a semicolon, we can have a list of comma separated values. Each of these comma separated values is something in quotation marks. So in this case, quotation mark, quotation mark, and a value in between that. So in the case of alacrity, what we're setting the value to is 90 colon class underscore G. Now 90 refers to the level of opacity. So if you change this to something like say 75, for example, you're going to have much more transparency. As we can see, it looks like that. And then after that, we have equals, and then inside of apostrophes, the class name that we want to use. So in this case, the class name for alacrity is just alacrity starting with a capital. Now, before we get into setting the blur values, there's a couple of other things we need to do to make the blur actually work. So the first thing we need to do is go and change the back end we're going to be using. So in this case, we need to go and set the back end to be GLX. So by default, it's going to be using XRender, and XRender is generally a safe fallback for Pycom to fall onto if PyCom is sort of unstable, but I've never really seen any issues actually using GLX on NVIDIA or AMD GPUs. Basically what GLX is going to do is enable OpenGL rendering and you need to have it set to GLX for this to actually work. So OpenGL is going to be considerably more performant than what XRender can do and basically all of the different feature branches require you to use GLX. If you can't get GLX working, then you can't use the blur method we're going to be using today. Now, there are other methods of blur you can use, like box blur and Gaussian blur and kernel blur. Box and Gaussian both require the GLX backend, but the kernel blur doesn't. But the thing is, I've never actually got the kernel blur actually working, so I don't know how to actually set that up. So there might be videos online about doing that, but Dual Kawase is going to be considerably faster. 
Now we can go and set our blur value. So I'm actually using one of the newer features where it allows you to actually define things inside of a block. So the nice thing about doing this is if we don't define it in the block, we'd actually have to go and prepend blur to each of these values. So blur dash method and blur dash strength. So if you want to do it like that, then feel free to do so. But I feel like this is a bit more of an annoying way to work. So I'm going to get rid of this. And as you can see, the way we define the block is blur colon, and then inside of curly braces, everything inside of the block. So in this case, we have method and strength. So method in this case, inside of quotation marks, we're going to set to dual underscore kawase, and then end the line with a semicolon. So dual kawase is basically a way to do blur that is going to be multi-threaded which on every computer that has multiple cores or multiple threads, which covers basically everything from the early 2000s, is going to be considerably faster. Now, the second thing we have in here is the strength. So this is basically the level of blur you want to use. So this is what zero looks like, and this is what the max value 20 looks like. So I feel like this is obviously completely unusable at this point. The reason why I like blur is because I still want to see some level of what's behind the window. So for me, really anything past two is a bit too much, but it's really going to be up to you. You might actually like it at something like 10. I think that at this point, blur really doesn't serve a purpose, but it's completely up to you. So go and do what you want. Now to actually enable the blur, we can't just run PyCom with no options. So I'm going to go and get rid of it now. So get rid of PyCom. And if we go and run PyCom with the dash dash experimental dash backends argument, this is going to enable us to actually use the GLX backend. If we don't include this, it's going to try and use the X render backend. And obviously that's not going to work. Now you might've noticed something else I was using in my config. So if we go back into my PyCom config, go down to pycom.conf, we can actually go and disable blur based on the window type. Now, most of your windows are going to be treated as a normal window. So all of your regular windows, except basically your status bar are going to be normal. We can go find a list of all of the window types inside of the pycom man page. So let's go down to normal. The main ones you're gonna care about are things like the dock. So dock is going to be your status bar. And from this, I would recommend just testing stuff out to see what things are different types of windows. So if we want to go and disable blur for all of my normal windows, we can go and set this value in here to false. And as we can see, we no longer have blur, but we still have our transparency. Now, one thing to mention is it might seg fault if you're using alacrity, and that usually happens if you have fading enabled. Now, I don't know the exact cases when this actually happens. So if we go and enable this, as we're gonna see, it is still, it's fading just fine. It's not seg faulting or anything like that. If I switch between desktop, it fades just fine. But when I was testing it the other day, it crashed every single time. So I don't know exactly why it's working now. I haven't actually pinned down the exact problem, but I know that it didn't do it when I was running ST. So it had to be some sort of problem on the alacrity side. Now in the future, I will be doing a follow-up video where I talk about just how much of a mess the PyCom fork situation is because if you haven't seen it, it's it's actually hilarious how terrible it is. There are so many forks and all of them have really cool features and none of them you can run together because you can only run one instance of PyCom at a time. So in this main version of PyCom now, really the only feature that we're missing is rounded windows and they might actually be here and I completely miss them. And if they are, then feel free to let me know. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andrew, Nathan, Monster, Chico Bento, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter Lee, Road, Tony, and all of my $2 patrons. If you want to go and support my work, there links down below to my subscribe star, Patreon, Libre, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, where I talk about not tech at all. It's usually this rambling nonsense. I've also got this channel available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.